The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 54A. This has us doing very much the same thing we did in 53A, setting up an allowance for doubtful accounts, getting ready for the fact that some of our receivables are gonna go bad, some of our customers will be unable to pay us. Uh, but this has us doing it in a slightly different way. In this way, I prefer most students like this way a little bit better than the uh, uh, percentage of sales method. Again, it's called the aging of receivables method, also sometimes called the balance sheet method. Let's jump into it and see how we do. Stormer Company shows the following information on July 31st, 2024, the company's fiscal year. AR is 5,000. Allowance for double accounts, a debit of 500. Remember what that means. It means last year, whatever our allowance was, let's say it was a $2,000 allowance last year, we wrote off more than we allowed for. We wrote off 2,500 to end up at a $500 debit in our allowance for doubtful accounts. If you're looking for an explanation on that, watch the end of the video on 53A. Uh, sales, 5,000 of which are cash sales, so 75 grand in total sales, must be 70 grand in credit sales. The company's account generated the following aging schedule of accounts receivable. So we have these $5,000 in AR, and they've said, let's break this down by age. 3,000 is kind of fresh AR, zero to 30 days outstanding. 30 to 60, that's maybe a little bit overdue, like slightly past due, 60 to 90, a month overdue, and over 90 days, a couple of months overdue. So we add these up and that's $5,000 worth of receivables. That's the 5,000 from up above in the question. So, uh, what we do is we get the company's account to kind of examine those and say, okay, what are the odds we're going to collect each phase of inventory? Of course, the, f I said inventory, receivables. Uh, the freshest receivables, you're very likely to collect. Like stuff that's not overdue, you're going to get most of the time. And they've said 99% of the time we get a fresh receivable. It's the older stuff we got to worry about. So 3,000 times 1% means of this 3,000, we're estimating that $30 is going bad. 3,000 times 1% is $30. Of our slightly overdue receivables, 1,000 times 5%, that's $50 is going to go bad. 600 times 10%, we're estimating that of our more old receivables, 60 bucks is going bad. And 400 times 40%, our really old receivables are the most likely to go bad. This should make some intuitive sense, right? If you've got a friend that owes you money, if you collect, the best time to collect is right away. If you let it wait a week, a month, a few months, you become less and less likely to collect. Well, the same is true of businesses, right? The longer they wait to collect or the longer the person takes to pay, maybe putting it the shoe on the other foot, the less likely it is you're going to see the money. And so here we're saying there's a 40% chance we're not going to see our money, only a 60% chance to collect. 400 times 40% is a hundred and sixty dollars. So we've computed these based on the age of our receivables. Let's add them all up here. 30, that was our top number, I believe. Yeah, 30 plus 50 plus 60 plus 160. I get three hundred dollars as my total here. Now, when we took, when I go back to problem five, three, when we took a percentage of our sales, the number we computed was our bad debt expense. And we kind of went off to the races from here. When we take a percentage of our aging receivables, this is not our bad debt expense. This is the ending balance of our allowance for doubtful accounts. So of our allowance. And this number is a credit must be a credit. So when we're doing this problem, step one is just to take those percentages of our aging receivables. So we took a percentage of all of our receivables as they aged, and obviously the older, the less likely to be collectible. We added them all together and we've computed the ending balance of our allowance. Now in the last 
uh, 5.3, we just plug that right into a journal entry. Whatever number we compute there, that's our bad debt expense, it goes out the door. Here we actually have to do steps in a different order. Here, we're gonna actually update our allowance T account. Allowance. And our allowance T account, we said, uh, began in a debit of $500. So let's start there, $500. And we know where it ends. The ending balance of our allowance, right there, $300 credit. Now, clearly this is not a working T account. I am missing a credit to my allowance. The question is, how big a credit am I missing? You'll always be missing a credit here. How big a credit? Well, a debit of 500 to end at a credit of 300, I need a, a bigger credit. I need $800 in credit. And if you just do the math here, uh, ignoring the 300 at the bottom, 800 on the right minus 500 on the left would leave us a $300 balance on the right. So it's, it was an $800 credit. Well, how do I insert a credit into this that, that doesn't exist already? I do a journal entry and I'm gonna credit my allowance for $800, just that missing amount. And the debit here is to bad debt expense. And it's the exact same journal entry as we did last time. And, and for setting up an allowance, it's always the same entry. Debit bad debt expense, credit the allowance. So that's what we'll do, debit bad debt exp 800 credit allowance 800 and the date on this was july 31st 2024 okay so we have done our adjustment uh so that was the answer to part a prepare the adjustment to the allowance for doubtful accounts based on the information we've done that the final step then show how accounts receivable would be disclosed on the balance sheet AR minus allowance equals AR net. Our accounts receivable is 5,000. Our allowance, now a lot of times students will plug in this 800 number because that's the freshest in their mind. No, no, no. The allowance is right there. The ending balance of our allowance is what's at the end of the T account. It's $300 credit. 5,000 minus 300 is 4,700. And there we have it. Uh, the big difference between this method and the percentage of sales method in terms of the steps, there are a difference in sort of the psychology or whatever the word is, but in terms of steps, these two are swapped. So with the aging of receivables method, the balance sheet method, we compute a percentage of our aging receivables. We update our allowance T account. Then we do our journal entry and then our AR net. With the other method, we do, we calculate a percentage of sales. We do our journal entry right away. Then we update our T account. So those just, those two get swapped. But once you've got the handle on one, you should be able to understand the other. Um, okay. I think that's it for problem 54A. As always, if this video has been helpful to you, please, I hope you'll be helpful to me and hit that thumbs up button. All right, guys, bye for now.